Hey everyone, my name is Tristan and welcome to my workshop. In my last video, I made this Boba Fett helmet and since then, a lot of people wanted me to make the rest of the armor. So, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own Boba Fett armor completely out of EVA foam. I'll be covering how to build the whole thing and in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to paint it and how to attach everything together. So, if this build interests you and you want to follow along, you can purchase the templates over on my Etsy store. This build is a pretty easy one, so if you wanna get into cosplay, it's a great first project. Make sure you watch the whole video to learn some cool techniques that you might not already know about. So let's get right into the build. Let's start by making the shoulders and chest. You'll need all the template pieces from file number 1. Trace all the pieces on 6 to 8mm foam. I used 8mm foam for the chest parts and 5mm foam for the shoulder parts because I don't have 6mm foam on hand. Some of the template pieces have blacked out areas on them, those are the dents from Boba Fett's armor from the Mandalorian TV show. I'm making the armor from the Book of Boba, so I won't add the dents to my armor. It's time to cut out the templates, and for that I like to use a craft knife and a box cutter. Make sure your blades are really sharp so your cuts are super clean. Take your time on those pieces because they're gonna be really visible. The right upper chest piece has two details that need to be carved out. I do that with a craft knife to get the cleanest results. Then the diamond has a center piece that needs to be inset by 2mm. Just cut out the piece and then glue it back in using super glue, but this time 2mm lower. Finally, cut off the excess material underneath. And this is what you should end up with. The lower chest plate has three round details right there. To make those details, I'll use the rounded tip on my rotary tool. And this looks pretty clean. The color guard needs four square details. I cut them out from 8mm foam and added bevels all around. Simply glue them on in the right spots using super glue. And that looks great. And here are all the pieces from file number 1, cut out and assembled. To give the pieces a cleaner look, you can round off the edges all around each piece using a rotary tool. After that, heat form each piece into the right shape using a heat gun. I like to form the pieces over a round object to make the process easier. Once you're done, here's how the armor parts should look. Let's move on to file number 2 which has the templates for the back piece and the knee guards. Trace your templates on 6mm foam for the knee guards and 8mm foam for the back piece. After that, simply cut out every piece. Make sure to cut those two lines at a 40 degree inward angle. Let's work on the back piece first. Take out your contact cement and put on a respirator. Then, apply glue on the four edges that will glue together. Let the glue dry for a couple minutes and glue the edges together. Make sure you follow the registration marks so they fit together properly. Once both sides are connected, this is what you should end up with. I decided to round off all the edges using my rotary tool to get the same clean look as all the other parts. Finally, give the back piece a more fitting shape using a heat gun. And that looks great! Let's move on to the knee guards. Start by rounding off all the edges except on both ends of the parts. Next, heat form them to get a nice compound curve. Each knee guard needs two of the smaller pieces. Simply apply contact cement on both ends of each knee guard and on the top of each of the smaller pieces. Finally, stick the small pieces on the knee guards with the notched out side on the bottom. Each knee guard needs two small detail pieces. The blueprints are in the templates. Three of them are the same, but one is different. You could totally make those parts out of foam dowels, but I use random things that I had laying around. The shorter piece is a small cap and the tip of a pen, and the longer pieces are wooden dowels and 2mm foam. The left knee guard has the shorter part on the top spot, so simply glue on each detail using super glue. And the knee guards look great! Now all the pieces from file number 2 are finished. Let's move on to file number 3, which has the most difficult parts to make. Of course, you have to start by tracing all the pieces on EVA foam. Here are all the pieces for the right gauntlet, the left gauntlet, and the hand plates. For the really thick parts, I simply stacked multiple pieces of foam together to get the right thickness. This part right here is 16mm, but it has an inset detail, so keep the two 8mm pieces separate for now. 
all you have to do is to cut out the detail on the first piece and then glue the two pieces together. I used contact cement. Like for every other part of this build, let's cut out every piece. Make sure you keep your cutting guide closed because a lot of pieces need angled cuts. When cutting out really thick pieces, make sure the blade on your box cutter is super sharp and extend it all the way out. Go slow and try to cut all the way through in one pass. If you can't do it, just do it in multiple passes. This piece has a notch that needs to be removed. Start by cutting it out normally and then remove that notch. This piece will fit over the thicker one we worked on earlier. With the pieces cut out, let's work on the hand plates first. As indicated on the templates, you'll need to have a 2mm triangle and border to glue on the base piece. I used super glue to attach the details, but you would probably get a cleaner result by using contact cement. The hand plates have two lines that need to be transferred on the back side. Then use a craft knife to cut a v-groove on those lines. A v-groove is when you cut almost all the way through your foam at a 45 degree angle on each side of the line. This creates a nice channel that lets you fold the piece more easily. You can then close up the grooves with super glue. After that, the last step is to clean up and round up the edges. After heat sealing the pieces, the hand plates are finished. Now it's time for a more difficult part, the left gauntlet. First, glue those two pieces together as shown on screen. I used contact cement. I quickly cleaned up the sides, and here is the result. Those three pieces will get stacked on top of each other starting with the smallest piece. Glue it on the indicated spot using super glue. And glue the bigger pieces together making sure they line up properly. This part needs angled sides, so remove some material with your box cutter on both sides and clean up the cuts with a rotary tool. With that done, this piece looks great. It does need one more detail, so get two toothpicks and cut them in the middle. Then push them in the front part we just made and secure them with super glue. This is what you should end up with. This part needs two notches removed from it at the top in the front and the bottom in the back. After cutting them off, I cleaned up the cuts and rounded off the edges. And this looks great. This piece has four lines that need to be transferred to the back. Using a sharp blade, cut v-grooves on each line. Add glue to only three of the lines. As you can see here, the second line from the front doesn't get glue. This is the main part of the gauntlet, and it needs some details. First, cut this line all the way through. Then remove those parts. After that, apply contact cement on them and the spots where they attach and glue them back in but 2mm lower. You can remove the excess thickness on the back for a cleaner look. Next, remove this bigger part. This one needs 2mm foam rectangles in 3 spots. After gluing them on, you'll have to stick the piece back in its spot. To make that easier, cut open one corner of the rectangle. Then apply contact cement on both pieces and the line you cut through earlier. You can glue that line back together, just like this, with one side being 3mm lower than the other. Finally, glue the rectangular part back in but at a 3mm inset. Remove the excess material at the back and this is the finished part. With every part of the right gauntlet ready, it's time to assemble everything together. Let's start by heat forming the base part into a nice curve. The first piece to glue on is this one. Apply glue on both this part and the other one. Then you can start by connecting those two edges together. Finally, connect the other piece to it very carefully. This is a pretty difficult step, so go slow and try to get the cleanest result you can. As you can see, the left side in the front attaches to the underside, forming a small wall. This is the first detail piece to glue on, but it doesn't quite fit yet. You'll have to cut an angle on the back so it fits on the angled wall of the gauntlet. You'll also have to cut an angle on the side that attaches here and carve the notch so it follows the angle. Now you can finally glue that part to the gauntlet and clean up the edges a bit. That looks pretty good. Now this part gets glued on the top here, this one goes right behind it, and this part goes on the side in the indicated spot. After a bit of cleaning up and heat forming, the left gauntlet is almost finished. 
there's a couple more details that need to be added on, like this wooden dowel and those two tube connectors. The wooden dowel goes under the detail part on the side of the gauntlet. The tube connectors go on the back of that same detail. With that done, the left gauntlet is finished. Let's move on to the right gauntlet. Here are all the pieces you'll need to make it. The base part needs 4 inset details, so carefully cut them out and glue them back in using contact cement or super glue, but make sure they sit 2mm lower than before. This piece is similar from the one from the left gauntlet. It needs V grooves and regular undercuts. The first, third and fifth lines are regular undercuts and the second, fourth and sixth line are V grooves. This is what you should end up with. Now you can glue the V grooves closed by using super glue. And here is the final result. Those two pieces also need V grooves. This one needs four, and this one needs three. With all the parts ready, it's time to assemble the gauntlet. But first, let's heat form the base part into a nice curve. The smaller piece needs a tight curve in the middle. The first pieces to glue together are these ones. Attach the two 45 degree angles together and then attach the wing of the bigger piece at the base of the smaller one. The end of the pieces should be flush like this and the wing part should never sit higher than the other part. Now simply connect the top piece to the base piece carefully to get a clean result. So far so good. This part with the V groove needs to be folded close to form a little module. This module attaches right here on the gauntlet. A 2mm detail gets attached to the module. Moving on, glue those two pieces together. First, close the V-grooves on the bigger piece and carefully attach the smaller piece on the front to end up with this. Finally, glue that part on the gauntlet right here. There are two 5mm details that go here and here on the back of the gauntlet. This piece goes on the side of the part we just glued on. On the front of the gauntlet, there should be a border here. To make it, simply cut halfway through the foam with a sharp knife and open the cuts with your heat gun. Then I'll use a wood burner to carve details in the small piece on the side of the gauntlet. I'll also carve the buttons on the front of the gauntlet. These should be buttons that extend outwards, but carving them is much easier. Those two parts have to connect together. You should end up with this. There are two blaster tips that go on the front of those pieces and I made them out of a wooden dowel and 2mm foam. I glued them on with super glue. There are also two smaller details on the top of that part which I made from a smaller wooden dowel. Those pieces go right on top of the bigger piece. That part we just made goes right here on the side of the gauntlet. And this is what you should end up with. After some cleanup and heat forming, the right gauntlet is mostly finished. The rocket that goes on top is a pretty complicated piece. Here's how I made it. The tail is a wooden dowel wrapped in 2mm foam. The main body is a PEX pipe wrapped in 5mm foam. The cone is a foam dowel which I carved into the right shape. And finally the tip is just the cap from a tube of silicone. I assembled the whole rocket with super glue. This is what I ended up with. I was too lazy to make the holes on the cone. And the rocket looks amazing on the gauntlet. I won't glue it on yet because I want to paint it separately. And with the right gauntlet done, all the parts from file number 3 are finished. Let's move on to file number 4, which is the last one. For now, we only need the parts for the belt. You'll need 5 and 2mm foam to make the belt. The template for the belt is separated into two pieces so that you can adjust the length to fit you perfectly. You'll have to make it longer in the middle so that the details stay in the same spot. To know how long your belt needs to be, simply measure around your waist. Once you have your measurement, add about 2 inches because the belt we're making needs to fit over another one. So cut a piece of 5mm foam that's the same width as the template for the belt, but longer than you think you need. Then mark the foam at the length you measured previously and remove the excess foam. One end of the belt has to stop at this line. The rest of the length is a piece of 2mm foam. So mark the shape you need to cut at the end of the strip of foam and cut off those corners. This is what you should end up with. The 2mm piece is nowhere strong enough to hold the belt closed, so let's reinforce it with a strip of thin nylon webbing. Simply glue it on the back with super glue and then attach it on the belt. 
The other end of the belt has a buckle and that part needs to be a rigid material like acrylic or wood. Because I have a 3D printer, I decided to print mine and sand down the layer lines. After that, I glued the piece at the end of the belt. And now the belt can close. For the pouches, simply trace this template twice on 2mm foam or faux leather. Those parts are kind of like Pepe Cura, where you need to pre-fold the parts on each line to make them easier to assemble. I did that with a metal ruler. After that, I applied super glue to the tabs one at a time, assembling that part of the pouch before adding glue to the next. After a couple minutes of work, I ended up with something that looks like this. As indicated on the template, the pouches need a detail strip in the middle like this. I glued them on with super glue. To make the foam pouches look like leather, I'll use this leather stitching wheel and add stitching marks on the detail strips. Now those strips look like they were stitched on. I did the same thing on the whole belt to give it that same look. And it looks pretty good. Next, using the template as a reference for placement, glue the pouches on the belt using contact cement. And this looks great. In the templates, I included a blueprint to make the belt buckle cover out of pieces of 2mm foam. But to save time, I decided to 3D print mine. I glued it on the belt using super glue. And that reinforces the buckle which was glued on the end of the belt earlier. I'll make the bullet holders to fit the same bullets as the one from my Mandalorian armor. Here's how to make them. First, cut a long piece of 2mm foam 1 and a quarter inch wide. Then, cut a slit on the first line and fill it with super glue. You can carefully push the strip of foam in that slit. After that, add glue to the second line and fold the strip of foam over one of the bullets and stick it down where you applied the glue. Repeat the process until you get to the last line. On the last line, cut a slit and push the foam strip in just like you did on the first line. Of course, cut off the excess length first. The end result looks pretty nice. I decided to add two more loops at two different spots on the belt to make it more interesting. To make the belt really look like leather, heat it up with your heat gun and push in some scrunched up aluminum foil. Do this on the whole belt including the pouches to get a nice leather like texture. And that looks surprisingly good. The last parts to make for Boba Fett's armor are the boot covers. I made the templates so you can make them out of foam or you can sew them out of faux leather. If you want to make them out of foam, cut the templates on the inside lines. If you want to sew them, cut them on the outside lines. I don't know how to sew, so I'm gonna make them out of foam. First, transfer the template pieces on 3, 4 or 5 mm foam. After that, carefully cut out each piece. Before gluing the parts together, I recommend adding the sewing marks with the leather tracing wheel. I did it on all the edges of all the pieces. Then heat up the parts and add the texture with the aluminum foil. Once that's done, I added some contact cement to the edges that need to be connected together. Just don't apply glue on the edges where the zipper will go. Now simply glue all the pieces together following the letters and registration marks. You should end up with something that looks like this. Before going any further, I rounded off the edges all around the boot cover. This should make it look like the leather was folded over, giving it a cleaner look. Those two pieces are supposed to be little straps. Round off the edges with the rotary tool, add the sewing marks, and give them the leather texture. Then attach them where they go on the boot covers. I even added fake rivets with hot glue. I recommend practicing this technique on a scrap piece of foam before doing the real thing. With that, the left boot cover is finished. Of course, you have to repeat the same steps with the templates flipped over to get the right boot cover. To keep them closed, I used a zipper. Here's the second belt which I made with a big rectangle of full leather. I simply glued on the rope with hot glue and it closes on the back with velcro. That belt fits under the other one we made and they look great together. With that done, the whole armor is finished. And the armor is finished, or at least the building portion is done. Apart from the gauntlets which have a lot of pieces, the armor is super fun and easy to build, which is why I recommend it to beginners. Like I said at the start of the video, the templates to make this armor are available over on my Etsy store along with many others. And for the first two weeks after this video comes out, they will be at 20% off. 
And if you want to see more of what I do, things that don't always make it into my videos, you can go follow me on Instagram. All the links will be in the description. Of course, stay tuned for the next video because we're going to finish this armor and it's going to look amazing. But for now, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more cool builds like this one. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.